Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF video and today I'll be taking a quick look at the High Point Rocket Raid 7608A raid card. So this is it here. High Point sent me this recently to use in an upcoming workstation build. I am upgrading my workstation to the latest Threadripper. Previously or in my current workstation, I use two of the Quad M.2 cards. They are the basically the bifurcated cards that uh, convert the slot to by four by four by four. You have four drives and then away you go. You create the raid array in the BIOS and that is it. This card's a little bit different. In this video, I wanna explain the differences between this card and something like a quad M.2 or a dual M.2 card. One of those cards that you used to get uh, bundled with your motherboards back in the day. I'm not sure if they do that anymore. I think maybe some boards come with the dual M.2, but not too many because they do require the specific lane config on the motherboard for those to work. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the ways to run this card, the built-in raid, the different raids, uh, and also cover a bit of the software as well. So quickly, I've already taken this out. I have had this for a little while to play around with. Um, inside the box, you quick start user manual, pretty simple. If you're into this stuff or you've done this stuff before, you know how to use it. If you haven't used this stuff before, uh, High Point does have a lot of resources on the website. So I recommend checking all that out. You also get the different size thermal pads. You get 1.5, you get one, and then you get 0.75 millimeters, and then the card itself. Those will be used for different uh, SSDs for the different thicknesses. Not all, des uh, not all SSDs are the same, depending if they're like the dual-sided or the single-sided and so on. Uh, before I pull this card apart, yes, it is fully populated. I do have eight, eight terabyte a data or XPG, uh, whichever you want to call it, uh, M.2s inside. So shout out to A data for sending me those. This drive will replace one of my current arrays in my workstation. I have three of the Kyoxia 15 terabytes in RAID 0. So that gives me about, I'd say about 40 or so once formatted around about that. You never get the true amount once you format it. And this will bump me up to about 64 because that array is fully uh, full. Now before you say RAID 0, why would you do that? I do like to use RAID 0 on locally on my workstation because I do have other backed up uh, resources where my data goes to. Like I have a NAS, I have a DAS, and all my data is duplicated on those. So most of the time I want raw speed when it comes to copying my data. Quick look at the card, single fan in the middle around the end side, which you would see from the outside of your chassis. These are the uh, drive LEDs on here. Not sure if that's going to get in focus. And then the butt end of the card, we do have a a PCIe 6 pin power connector, you do need to run the power on this card. I wouldn't say it's power hungry, but I think coming from the slot, it may not be enough to power this card. Now let's have a look inside. So six screws, probably should have taken these out before just to make it a little bit faster to take off. So I can probably explain now the difference between this and something like one of those quad m.2 cards now quad m.2 card requires a full by 16 slot but you need a special option in the motherboard not all of them do this to bifurcate that slot so you need to break that slot down to four chunks you need to divide it by four by four by four by four and that is normally an option in the bios whereas the difference between and for this card is it doesn't need that this can run just in a full 16 it can run in a full eight or it can run in a in a four now, you won't get the same speeds out of the eight or a four, but you'll still be able to see all the drives. Now, in a quad M.2 card, where you have, say, the one, two, three, four drives, if you run it in, say, a by eight, and you bifurcate it to by four by four, that gives you eight, you will only see the first two drives. If you run it in just a single by four, I don't think I've tested this, but I'm pretty sure you'll only see the first drive, because each drive runs off a by four interface. So the difference between this, actually a little bit of thermal pad came off. I will save that to put back on. So this does have a uh, sort of the pogo pins for the fan, which is nice, no connectors. So going back to what I was saying with this card, it just runs off the four by 16 interface and then it uses the RAID chip to do all the configuring, all the RAID and so on. So you can run it on a 16, an eight and a four, which is pretty sweet. Now speeds of this card i've done some quick testing they do state that you can get something like 64 gigabytes of bandwidth my real world transfer tests i used uh, crystal dismarch mark did have to do some changing for 
the queues and so on, and I was hitting about 59,000 megabytes a second. What a normal Gen 5 SSD does, I think 14, 11 to 14, depending on what model, uh, Gen 4 uh, SSD M.2 does around seven or so. So this does 59,000 I got. Then obviously if you run this in a by eight slot, I think I got about half that in my motherboard I tested. I went in the BIOS, set this slot to buy eight, and I think I got about 27. And unfortunately I couldn't set my slot to buy four, but I can only assume if you set it to buy four, you would probably get around half of that. You'd probably get something like 13 or something, but you would still get the mass storage of all of the eight drives. Now, I didn't mention earlier, but this is actually a Gen 5 card as well. So you can populate all of these with Gen 5. Now that'd be pretty overkill. I have populated this with all Gen 4. I'm not sure if there are actually eight terabyte Gen 5 drives out there. I don't think ADATA does them or I don't think anyone else does them. So these are Gen 4, all of these, and you can still saturate this card or even saturate the slot using the Gen 4. You don't need the Gen 5 to fully saturate. And as you can see in my testing, I could still get around the 56 thousand megabytes transfer speed running all gen uh, 4 drives now with the built-in raid there's actually two versions of this card the other model is a 1608a that one doesn't have the built-in raid chip so that'll come down to your operating system uh, whatever you're using them for whatever ai or anything you'll have to create the raid through the software of the os to do that but i wanted to go down the route of the raid option for the RAID levels, you've got single, RAID 0, RAID 1, and RAID 10. Now, for those who are familiar with RAID, you might be running, well, why is there no RAID 5? So I did reach out to High Point about this, and they did give me a pretty good answer. It's just not that they didn't want to do it. It was a cheaper alternative, but they kind of skewed this towards their customer base. And they said that their customers prioritize their speed over all else. So RAID 5 is generally avoided for most applications, some examples of this include AI, ML, LLM training, data ingestion, 3D design, engineering, and animation. So what they're trying to say is RAID 5 isn't the optimal use case for those scenarios. And the right parity required for RAID 5 and RAID 6 introduces quite a lot of overhead to the NVMe media and was only really designed for SAS and SATA drives, primarily mechanical hard drives. Now, I remember back in the day when Highpoint had their 16 port RAID cards, we had a bunch of drives uh, jam-packed in like a 4U rack mount chassis. We used to go to LAN parties. We used to fire up DC Hub. We used to copy, of course, uh, legal Linux ISOs. And we used to play around with all of that stuff and it was really fun. And that's what RAID 5 is really designed for. For NVMe media, it's not really the best for that. So moving on to the software, there's two ways to manage this. You can do it via the BIOS and you can also do it via their software BIOS. Simply go into your motherboard. You can see the high point card pop up and then you can select uh, create array and so on. But when you move over to the software, you're greeted with this main screen here. So at the top, you get global view, physical, logical. Physical are your physical drives. Logical is the RAID array you've created. You have settings, event, SHI, and then help. So if we click on the high point RAID control, if you have multiples of these, they will show up here. So you can click on your second one. We have the enclosure one. We have devices. I can see all of my eight drives there shows you the capacity and so on. Now, one cool feature are the sensor options. Now, I copied about 39 terabytes of data when I put this in my current workstation to back up that data. That workstation has three uh, coaxia, 15 terabytes in RAID 0. So I copied that array, all the data on that array, onto this new card. And I copied the 39 terabytes of data in exactly two hours. I think that was copying at about 9,000 megabytes a second and I was checking all of these uh, sensors and it was really handy to see uh, things like if I hover over the temperature we can see the power consumption it was drawing I think it was drawing about 70 75 watts when it was full-on copying all in action fan speed it shows you and then it shows you all the temperatures shows you the chip the chip always ran hotter and then you've got all of your drives there so you've got port one down to port eight currently they're idling and they're all around 35 40 I think when I was about one hour into my copying, the all the drives were around, I think, of the low 70s, which isn't too bad considering the workstation I have it doesn't really have any internal airflow in the chassis. Then we have a fan speed graph and then we have the power consumption graph and you can see it going up and down. Whenever you copy data, 
it's going to go up and then it will drop down when you're not. And then you can look at the last hour, you can look at the last day, and I believe that all it has five day blocks at a time, which is pretty cool. And then you can refresh that. Now moving on to logical, I don't want to recreate this array right now just to show you uh, because I have copied all of my data onto this and I don't really want to copy it again. So basically all you do is create array. Obviously it's not going to allow me to do it now because I have no spare drives. You would then go to array type, what you want. Then you would choose your drives and then away you go. You would just hit create and that would create that array. Now moving on to settings. Probably not too much to talk about on this page. Things like changing the temperature unit to Fahrenheit to Celsius, auto rebuild uh, and the alarm and all of that. I Actually, there was somewhere where you can set the fan as well. I might just go over to that just so we can see. I basically have left that at auto. The fan only ramps up when you turn your PC on. I think it does like a bit of a, a, bit of a fan test. It ramps up and then it goes down and it's been pretty much silent the whole time. Actually, this has been set to low. I'll set it to auto just in case it does need to ramp up. Got to wait for this to apply. You can see it's spinning up in the top corner that's doing something. Okay, that's applied that. Uh, one thing I do want to look at is the SHI. So this, this is the smart monitoring. You can see all of my drives here. This is the associated RAID array. This is what I call it, just a random name. And we can go to detail and we can see the smart information because Windows will not be able to pull this information up. If I run something like HW Info 64, it can't pull this up. It'll pull up the array, but it won't pull up each individual drive. Now, if you have the other model, which is the non-RAID version, I'm pretty sure Windows will be able to see those drives. It's just that this one is inside the RAID. It cannot see them. So you can see things like uh, the temperature here, and it's also cool. You can see the total bytes written to each of the drive. And I'm sure if you add all of that up, it's going to be somewhere around the 40 or so terabytes that I've copied onto it. And then it should have things like drive health, all of those power on hours, all of that. And then if we go to another one, it'll just show you the rest of the information. Alrighty, so that's pretty much it on this video. I think I will pick up a second one of these cards only because I do have a pretty good use case for a second one. I do have another bunch of ADATA 4 terabyte uh, M.2 SSD. So I've got the eight eights in this one. I've got another eight four terabyte drives and I'll throw that in and then the workstation board I use can accommodate all of this. And then when the workstation build uh, is done, I'll do a full time that's build video on it. And then I'll do an overview video about the final build as well. And when it comes down to price, these are quite expensive. These aren't anything like the quad M.2s that get uh, bundled in your motherboard, nothing like that. For these, you're looking at uh, $19.99. So bang on $2,000 just for the card and then populated with all of these uh, M.2s, you're looking at about 10 grand for this setup. Now, for most people, probably not going to be able to sort of justify the price, but it's not really designed for everyone. It's gonna be designed for someone who can use the use cases for this workstation, if you're into AI, anything like that, and you're using it for a business. Definitely uh, not designed for a gamer or anything like that. But yeah, I'll keep you updated on the progress of this build, but I wanna thank Highpoint for sending this out. I do wanna thank ADATA for supplying the M.2 SSDs. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.